Pittsburgh. Happy to have you with us on the ACC Network. And we are underway. Eagles control the opening tip. Turnovers are going to be a key factor in this game. Already a ball spilled out on the floor. And it'll be Pitt's possession. Such a big role. Turnovers played when these teams last met. And a good job by Pitt to set the tone on the defensive end to start the game. You saw that hedge by Rapalucci Ayadel, which led to the disruption. Aaron Battle looks inside, already down low for Leah to King. Up strong, that's her own miss. King is fouled underneath. And that's a great job by Boston College to get that contest without fouling. But what they're going to have to do is rebound. Leo Tu is great on the boards, great on the offensive glass. And they're not going to want to foul her and give, give her anything cheap down there. Jojo Lacey picked up the foul. King picks up the inbound, goes up strong again. Oh, missed it. Yeah, Sid Berry, the outlet for Kayla Ivey. Cross court, Tiana Todd for three. Too strong. It'll stay Boston College. And he saw that as a key for Boston College to want to, you know, rebound and run. And quick open threes and transition is something that Coach Mack likes. The rebounds were key when these teams last met as well as rebounds to the turnovers. That's where the game was won and lost. One for Boston College, lost for Pitt. Boston College had 19 offensive boards when these teams played in January. It's the highest total that Pitt allowed this season. Another pull up from three for Boston College, and this one finds an eyeline, JoJo Lacey. And uh, she didn't hesitate. I'll say JoJo Lacey might still look a little hot. And coming off 23 points. Last game against UNC, an upset win. He's a Malcolm down low. Turn over. Deanna Todd off her knee. Up strong down low from Wagoner. Only a two king comes away with it. So sloppy early on from these two teams. Yeah, sloppy for sure. Game needs to settle in, settle in a little bit. Washington's looking down low again for King. And there's the first two of the day for Leah Two. And this is one of, for both of these teams, the inside games size-wise are matched up pretty good with height. So I wouldn't gamble down there. Kind of just would, would like to see BC just play solid if they can. Ivy, Lacey, Tiana Todd. Jojo Lacey pulls it inside. And two King, prayer in battle. Apolucci Ayadale honored today, throws it down low. Caught too far underneath Leah Two King. Just tend to shoot, battle, drives, floater. Doesn't get the roll. And a push underneath against Aaron Battle, her first. Good offensive possession for BC, uh, for Pitt, though. They didn't get it to fall, but they got the ball inside out, got a good look at it. Already three turnovers in the early going for Boston College. Malcolm drives and finally gets it to go. And Aislinn Malcolm, a player for Pitt that has been looking for consistency all season, but she's definitely shown that she can be someone that scores points for this Pitt team. Feels like time stops whenever it's going around and around the rim like that. <laughs> Tiana Todd, too strong. King gives it away. And just the sloppy early theme continues. King thumped underneath by Wagner. Boston College is loose with the ball against the full court pressure, but Aislinn Malcolm gets the left drive with contact and finishes. Aaron Battle, the freshman, saw some of her starting time dip midway through the year, got it back, turns it over here. Wagoner, her first two. Yeah, the turnovers have been a thing on both sides. Um, and they're not really forced. It's just kind of making, you know, bad passes, trying to find something that isn't there yet instead of executing and letting it develop. Washington's Ayadel. Alia to King pulls up the mid range, doesn't get it to go. Forward by Jojo Lacey. Ivy. 
floor general for this Boston College team, Kayla Ivey. Lacey Zephyr Sidbury, the transfer from Utah. A wing three from Todd. No good. King, another board. Washington's outlet for battle. Battle, another two. Game settling into a rhythm now after some early turnovers. It is, and both teams looking to turn their defense into offense. That's a good look out of transition for Aaron Battle. Jumper is good from Sidbury. Can knock it down. 13.2 points per game this season for Boston College. And Coach Mack did mention that she's looking for Taya Sidbury to have a, a strong game today. They see another strong board. Ivy wanted to push it initially. Finds Sidbury up strong, and she'll head on the line for a chance at a three-point play. I love that execution by BC. You know, guards are the ones getting back in transition first a lot of times. And you see Taya Sidbury run the floor, get the mismatch post up against Aislinn Malcolm, and finishes with a chance for an extra point at the line. To the line for the Place the three-point play as Joanna Burnaby to me looks on. Head coach very happy with the way this team has continued to push through this season despite the record. Battle right in front here. And she'll clap it up. Arrow goes to pit. Yeah, it's been impressive. You know, when a team you know has more losses than wins, it's sometimes hard to, to keep the energy, to keep the hard work. And she says that Boston College still approaches its practices with great energy and work ethic. And you see that in the games. They have a lot of games in their uh, losing streak before that win against Carolina, where they were just losing by short margins. They play hard. Second effort, Leah to King. Now with four points and three boards, going to be on double-double watch all day. Just picked up her 17th double-double of the year. Last game, second in the ACC. Wagoner. Ivy in the corner for Lacey. Sidbury lost it. Washington's long outlet for King. Leah to King. Early six points. And that is beautiful basketball. I love the dig by Washington's. And she averages 1.3 steals a game. So it's a great heads up play, long outlet to their go to player, Leah to King, for the finish. No hesitation again from JoJo Lacey. Something you touched on earlier when she made the three. Confidence spilling over from the UNC win last time out. Yeah, a lot of the looks that BC gets, they are wide open and they're good shots. I would say that that one was a bit of a settle. I think they could have got something better, but I love the confidence to keep shooting from the outside. Gabby Hutcherson with confidence of her own. And Pitt now pulls ahead by three. Seven old run for the Panthers. of runs they've been all season. High highs, low lows. The board underneath by Kayla Ivey. Rather, Sidbury, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, Sidbury had the position underneath the whole time. Uh, there were guards on that backside, so she just kind of jumped up, got it uncontested, and finished. Some trouble there, and a timeout taken by Tori Verdi. Been an issue of those runs. Some good, some bad for Pitt. It was on display last game against Miami. They're on a positive note right now. Up by one. Sixth meeting all time between Boston College and Pittsburgh. A lead on the series by 15 for Boston College. They've won five of the last six. And the last one was a thriller back in January. It's maybe easy to realize the score was a 13-point game, but that was thrilling to the end of the fourth quarter. Boston College pulled away then in overtime. So Pitt looking for some revenge here today. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what an exclamation point to the season if you're able to end on a win on your home floor against a team that you went into overtime with and lost, you know? So good opportunity here for them. Jasmine Thomas, I'm Joe Malpa. Happy to have you with us here this afternoon. One point lead in the early going, just under four to play here in the first quarter. Bella Perkins finds her way out of the court for the first time today. Lead to King underneath in some traffic. Already more than halfway to her double-double. At 17 on the season, has 6.6 boards today. And low, it's Tiana Todd. Ball on the way up, she'll head to the line for two. 
Can you see Andrea Daly in now for uh, Boston College and like instantly the tempo kind of got even faster. She's you know an explosive player, gets in lane lines. That was a good find down there. Andrea Daly is their leading scorer this season, 13.4 points per game. Doesn't start today. Todd from the line, good on her first. 78% free throw shooter this season. The sophomore from Vaughan, Ontario. He was staying healthy this season for Todd. Missed some time last year, seconds in and out. But missed some time last year, showed glimpses of what she could be going forward. She solidified some of those glimpses this year. Another turnover, though, from Pitt in the early going. That's four. But Pitt with a clear emphasis to get the ball on Todd. ID directing traffic. Sidberry pops out. Hey, Sidberry waits, 10 to shoot. Sidberry throws it down low for Daly. Andrea Daly traveled. Yeah, she did. Got away with a little extra hop there, but Boston College looking to get Taya Sidberry some touches around that high post. She's really good in that area, so they'll definitely keep going back to her there. Nine combined turnovers already in this first quarter. I mentioned it would be a theme between these two. Matter of capitalizing the points off of those turnovers as the day goes along on Q. Another, it's 5 5 in that department in the early going. Yeah, and Battle kind of just trying to get that one into Leah 2 a little too badly. You know, the defense was on the low side, and that's where she passed it, but they get it back on a rebound there. Case with Malcolm into the corner. Handoff from Hutcherson. Perkins works it around. Battle thought about a quarter three right when she got it. Now swiped away by JoJo Lacey. Ivy from the wing, a three is good. It's the second of the day for JoJo Lacey. Yeah, and I mean, she is not hesitating. You know, I mentioned her last three probably was a little bit of a settle, but that one, was, you could see that she's in rhythm. And then she comes away with the steal and gets the break going. And draws the foul. They had two King, a guilty party. JoJo Lacey with the steal, gets the break going for Boston College, and then is able to knock down the triple, staying hot off of her last game against Carolina. Joanna Burley back to me, described JoJo Lacey as a player who's just uninhibited right now and just reaching her full potential. Yeah, she's just playing inspired, and you love to see it. 8.5 this season, but has started each of the last two games. Average 16 in those two starts. Lacey already with seven today. 7-0 run now for Boston College. Game of runs. Boston College's turn. Lincoln made a run. Only watching it's Grace and Malcolm. It's a tight first quarter for Pitt last game against Miami. They struggled mightily in the second quarter and the fourth dominated the third. It's just ups and downs quarter by quarter and another giveaway now for Washington. Harry the other way. Washington's tried to draw the charge. It'll be a block this time. And Washington's holding her ankle, writhing in pain underneath. Player who all season long has had a knack for getting in the way, not being afraid of the contact, has drawn 33 of the team's 48 drawn charges this season. Something that Tori Verdi gives her a lot of credit for. Tried to get in the way of this one right there. Just the left ankle rolled. Just called for the block. Wagoner came through. Yeah, it's hard to see because she, she rolled it and then it got stepped on, which made it even more intense for sure. I really hope she's okay. She's going to be helped immediately over to the locker room, it looks like, clearing the way down to the tunnel. Bring her right back to the trainer's room. That's tough to see, especially early in this game for a player like Washington. It's what she's meant to this team in ways the heart and soul. How many times has one of her drawn charges sparked something this year for the Panthers? Three-minute drought. 
for Pittsburgh. Now looking up at a second point deficit. King. Yeah, that zone that Boston College plays, it's unique and they have a lot of activity. It's how they're able to come away with so many steals. And that's a great look by Todd, but Dontavia Wagner can't finish. And a foul then against Tiana Todd. She can't believe it. Yeah, we mentioned earlier in the game that Pitt would need to take care of the ball. And, you know, they started off pretty decent, but since have not been able to find a rhythm against that zone defense and has turned it over. A couple of players also to the court. Taylor Jordan, Raven Boswell for Pittsburgh. Hushersen and Malcolm go have a seat. Taylor Jordan missed the last two games for Pitt. Somebody they really need to look to as a secondary scoring option. So much of it has been Leah Two King, and then what? Bella Perkins has stepped up and gotten hot lately from three. But it's usually Jayla Jordan who's able to step up and be that secondary option. Perkins looking right away down low for Jordan. Cross court pass, great vision. Pull up, no good. Right four underneath Leah Two King is Jessica Timerson. This is one who missed the shot. Arrow favors Boston College, and it'll be Eagles ball. Daly drives, pulls up from just inside the free throw line. Doesn't get the roll. Given away by Jalen Jordan as she tried the outlet. Blocks the shot then, but on the follow, it's Andrea Daly. We can't talk enough about the activity of JoJo Lacey. She's literally having an impact on the game all over the floor, and it's because of her hustle that Daly gets that layup. Shot clock turned off, last possession of this first quarter. Boston College, a nine-point lead. Timerson for Perkins, five to shoot. King, three to shoot in this quarter. Perkins now heaves one up, no good. And Boston College ends the first quarter with a nine-point lead after a strong start for Pitt. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a good start for Boston College to be able to weather that. Now kicking things off in quarter number two. With Jasmine Thomas, I'm Joe Malpa. A nine-point lead for Boston College after a strong closing kick for the first quarter and a good response to begin the second from Pitt. Yeah, I love that duo between, with King and Jordan. They've been great all season for Pitt, and I like the decision to get the ball in both of their hands for some high-low action. They're scoreless over the last 4-11 of the first quarter, Pittsburgh. Good to get off to a good start on the right foot in the second. Shot for a walk from the pit bench, didn't matter in the end. Shot that didn't fall, Battle brings it ahead. Leah Two King. Well, Perkins hasn't pulled up from three just quite yet. When she gets going though, she can pour it in. As well, found King. Now King goes strong, and it's an offensive foul against Leah Two King. Yeah, two fouls on King is definitely significant and something to keep an eye on. I do see where she kind of slung that off arm a little bit, but I don't know. The BC player wasn't necessarily in front of her to draw that, so that's just a tough call. It's such a gray area. How far did she extend it? Was it a little nudge? That's why I'm glad I have a headset next to you and not a whistle on the court. <laughs> Ivy bounce pass in the corner. Another three for Lacey. Really feeling it early on. That one goes in and out. A stumble. Battle gets back to her feet. Already saw Washington go to the locker room. King tried to draw the charge. Rebound put up strong and in from Andrea Daly. And this pit team works on taking charges, but if I'm Leah too, I'm not taking that one right now. She already has two. Don't even give the refs, you know, any kind of gray area not to be sure what to call. Boswell, Perkins. And battle. Down low for Jalen Jordan, looking for her first points. Spin move down to the paint. Doesn't get the friendly roll. Ivy brings it up. 
Michaela Ivey. Nice no look pass underneath. Another chance at a three point play for Dontavia Wagoner. Yeah, Ivy just plays at her own pace. She's so great at facilitating for this team. She, the shot fake and, you know, gets going to the rim. And that was a sweet little look off dump. You know, point guards always love when the assist gets rewarded and their teammate finishes. That's a great finish by Wagner. And that was something that really stood out to Coach Mack from Boston College the first half of that game against UNC. 14 of their 17 buckets had an assist attached to them. Really sharing the ball well, unselfish play. And that was what sparked their offensive success. Yeah, the, Coach Mack said their best offense is when they're sharing the ball, playing confident, shooting it confident. Up a dozen now. And another offensive foul, this one against Jayla Jordan. Yeah, yeah. 13 points off turnovers. Boston College, you mentioned that would be a big storyline coming in, the turnovers. I'm in. She sold it, so it's a good call. <laughs> Ivy, a wing for Todd, back to Ivy. Directing traffic, another no look to the corner. Todd gets her feet behind the line and gets three more on the board. Yeah. Boston College doubling up pitch so far. Yeah, and that's just great decisions and patience. Coach Mack said she wanted to see her team be patient and they're finding good shots because of it. And a great look for Hutcherson and a foul against Pitt. Todd passes it to Ivy up top, and she just boomerangs it back off of the relocation by Todd. Pitt's defense just doesn't find her, and she knocks down the three. And they get a third on Leah Two King. So now down 15, Leah Two has to head over to the bench. Yeah, that's a scary combination for them to be, have this deficit, not have their best player on the floor for who knows how long. So it becomes a trust thing for Tori Verdi when you put her back out there. Seven to go in the second quarter. You risk letting this get further out of hand down 15. The longer you keep her on the bench, but also three fouls is three fouls. Underneath, Sidbury misses wildly. Hutcherson brings it in. It's really important for Pitt to take care of the ball right now. That's a great finish by Rapalucci Iodell, who has been great for this team on the boards. So it's nice to see her just run the floor, get rewarded with the layup. Somebody Aislinn. has to pick up the slack then for King going to the sideline, and it's Iodell in this one. It is, and that's a great feed by Malcolm from the wing. Hill, a 65% free throw shooter. This is this one. Couldn't complete the three point play. A really strong career she had at three different JUCOs before coming to Pitt. Two time JUCO All American. Sperry's three. Touches the nylon, but an air ball. Only two field goals for Pitt over the last near eight minutes of gameplay. Boston College staying active, using their length and activity to really make it tough for Pitt. Battle from the corner, no good. Sidbury lost it to Iadell, but Iadell gave it away while she tried to keep it in bounds. Lacey from the baseline, left it short. She'll say it was a pass when all was said and done because Sidbury was there to clean it up. And a timeout by Pitt, a much needed one, down 15. Another six to go in the second quarter. Yeah, Pitt's doing it. I mean, Boston College is doing it with the defense and they're getting in passing lanes and it's a little bit of joke. Turnovers, they're generating them and they're capitalizing on them. They are, it's the activity, it's the length, using their arms, getting in passing lanes. They're coming up with steals and they have 16 points off of 13 pit turnovers, and they're doing it by committee. Everybody is chipping in, doing a little bit of something. We have 11 steals. Taya Sidberry has nine points. JoJo Lacey has eight. Dontavia Wagner has nine. They're doing it as a team. A little math class for you on Sunday. 12-point difference in points off turnover, 15-point difference on the scoreboard. It all adds up to a nice lead right now for this Boston College team. And the most important number might be three. Three fouls for Leah Tuki, who's over on the bench during all this right now for Pitt. 
Americans. Leading the point right now, pulls up for her first three of the game, and they're going to need some of that if they're going to claw their way back, the Panthers. They're absolutely going to need some of that. What it does for Pitt is it opens up the floor, and it's going to have to force Boston College to extend that zone a little bit, and then they can find some things back in their inside game. But that's a big three by Bella Perkins. Wagoner. Abby pops out back to Lacey in the corner. Ten to shoot. Wagoner finds Daly. Andrea Daly, five to shoot, has to go. Daly, good baseline find, no, good hand in the lane instead from Hutcherson. It looked like that was going to sneak through for Wagoner. Yeah, and that's a great defensive possession by Pitt. And here you see Bella Perkins, she's been hot in the last few games for Pitt, and she just knocks down the deep range three. 2.1 to shoot here for Boston College. Quickly inside, looking for Sidbury, and they won't even get a shot off. Battle. Malcolm rotates to the corner. Aislinn Malcolm, threes on back-to-back -back possessions, and it's a single-digit game once again. Yeah, and that's exactly how Pitt's going to have to do it. With Leah two out of the game, they're going to need to play great defense, get stops, and score it on the other end. And if they're threes, that's even better. Extend the tide until she can get back out there. And just saw Marley Washington sat back down on the bench in a boot on her left foot. So it doesn't look like she'll be able to continue on That's today. Cool. And another harder and two for Dontavia oh, Wagner. Yeah, she, Washington's turned that ankle pretty good. You know, I think she'll be okay, but it seems like the right decision to let her get, kind of start healing that. Hutcherson driving on Daly. Hutcherson hook off glass. Gets it to go. And Hutchinson is giving some good minutes off the bench for Pitt today. She has a three-pointer, and that was a nice, strong right-hand take. The team is finding some offensive rhythm now. It was sloppy early on, more so on the pit side because of all the turnovers. Yeah, you know, those afternoon games, sometimes you got to <laughs> wake up a little bit. It's basically the morning with a noon <laughs> tip, to be honest. Another wing three. Let's go, Pitt chance starting to ring up from the crowd. Ayadon with the board underneath. It's pinned in here to get this across the halfway line. Perkins. Bella Perkins, why not? Doesn't get this one. Lazy pushes and turns it over. This Boston College team likes to run, but they got to be careful at times not to have that catch up to them and haunt them with some turnovers of their own. Yeah, they do. They've done, done great to this point, knowing when to run and get a basket and when to get the ball in Kayla Ivey's hands and let her kind of run the show. Uh, but good job by Bella Perkins. So, uh, you know, she takes a shot, she misses it, but she comes back and she gets disruptive. There's Marley Washington over on the bench, wearing the boot on her left foot. There you see it. Trying to draw a charge in the first quarter. And that left foot stepped on. Perkins calling for it. Ella Perkins drives. Corner for Malcolm. Ross had her fingertips on it just into the game. Another turnover for Pitt. Yeah, Pitt just starting their offense way far out because of the BC pressure. And then by the time they tried to make a pass inside, they just got sped up. This has been a calling card all season long for Boston College. They average opponents 20.5 turnovers against Boston College, and the Eagles average 21 points off turnovers per game. Seeing that early on, Lacey, no good from the three. Perkins pushes and drives. That's off of Lacey's knee. Okay, Sidbury goes for a seat. Sidbury nine points here in this first half. Malcolm, a couple of possessions ago, had a nice three. Pursue it on the drive. Quietly, it's a seven-point game only. Yeah, that's a nice take down the left lane line over a you know a strong defender. Tavia Wagoner. Leads away with 11. Perkins is inside a half court. That's range for her. Directing traffic. Let's battle. Perkins lost it on the dribble. Kept it alive for Rust. 10 seconds to shoot. 
Perkins. From the baseline, no good. And it looks like it's last off of Andrea Daly. The reset of the shot clock as well. A good defense by Boston College. That was a tough contested two by Bella Perkins. They'll want to come away with that rebound, so hit with another opportunity to score. All right out to Malcolm. Two minutes to go in this second quarter. Second point lead for Boston College, who have twice led by 15 today. Perkins trying to cut it down a little bit more, and she does. And she has two from right there, one off the dribble, one off the catch. And I think she found her money spot for today. Sidbury going to get things going again offensively for Boston College. Lacey drives baseline, trying to kick it to the corner. Perkins swipes it. As yeah, soon as she came on the court, you mentioned they needed her to step up, and she has. She has, and Lacey just got up in the air and didn't know, have, have anywhere to go. And now you see Pitt kind of settling into this game. It's 30 to 34 with a minute left in this half. And unfortunately, Bella Perkins gives the ball back to Boston College. Went on cue a giveaway the other way, and Lacey adds two more. Now in double figures with 10. When this Pitt team doesn't turn the ball over, they're able to get their defense set. So they've been scoring it, which has closed the gap, but they've also been able to defend five on five. And there you see back-to-back -back turnovers that'll give the ball back to Boston College. Fifty point one in this second quarter. Waiting and waiting and waiting, and now Ivy picks it up. Ivy with six assists already. The floor general for this Eagles team. That's a kickball against Pitt. Second quarter is where the game got away from Pitt last time out in the loss against Miami. It was getting away from them here, but they rallied in the late stages of this quarter. And that's good defense by Pitt. You hear everyone screaming, screen the screener. That was the action that was coming up by Boston College, and they were able to get it deflected out of bounds. From the baseline, no good. Rebound gathered by Kayla Ivey. Silver lining maybe for Pitt is they're still only down six despite 16 turnovers in this first half, already in line with their average per game, just in the first half alone. A lot of contact in the lane there, and it's a charge. And that's a great job by Russ to come over and draw that charge. They needed that momentum basket, now, uh, that momentum play, and now they have a chance to end this half with an offensive possession. Shot clock will turn off, 21.4 to go. In a six-point game. It was a flop warning over to the Boston College bench that has Joanna Burnby McNamee irate right now. Yeah, uh, Todd on that last jumper where she fell, I saw the ref kind of motioning to her to get up, get up, and she told her that that was a flop. Aaron Battle glances up at the clock. Ten seconds to go in this half. Tips out of play by Nene Enjai, who just came out there for Boston College for a brief moment. So check back out now for Wagner. Leah Two King has been on the bench for Pitt ever since the seven minute mark of this second quarter because of three fouls. Five seconds, battle makes her move to the basket. Battle off glass, a charge. So now Boston College will have their last chance at a bucket in this first half. Both teams trading charges. That's something they must work on in practice. <laughs> Dontavia Wagner, she was right there and really took that one on the chest. That was an easy call. Some substitutions for the Eagles. 2.5 seconds. Ivy trying to find an outlet, gets it back. One second, has to heave it. Never got a shot off. 
A back and forth first half sees the Eagles up six going into the break. Yeah, and I mean, I wouldn't have guessed that the score for Boston College and Pitt here in 2024. I could have you with us on the ACC Network. On the Jasmine Thomas, Thomas, I'm Joe Malfa. And right away, a chance at another one from the free throw line for Boston College. Great start to the third quarter. It is, and it was a slow half for, for Todd. She did some great things defensively. She had four steals, but she was one of seven from the floor. So to, to start the second half with an and one jumper, got to give you some confidence. Janet Todd goes to the line and completes the three-point play. Leah Two King left this game with seven to go in the second quarter because of picking up her third foul. Back out there now, has to be careful. Perkins finds King. When she left, she had six points and nine boards, and now she has eight points and nine boards. And I love that. Come in aggressive, get her a touch right away. She knocks down the jumper. She's great in that mid-range area. Nice to have one go through. Her first shot back out there after a lengthy layoff from three. It's Ivy, not necessarily her game. She's that floor general, but when she has the moment, she can connect as well. Yeah, she doesn't look to score that much, but when she does, there are great decisions, so we usually see those going. Rust, a great decision there. Looking down low for King and turns it over. And that's a freshman looking to get her go-to play of the ball. You, you know, you, she's definitely looking in the right way, but maybe ball fake that one, get the defense to collapse on King like you know they're going to, and, and find the person outside that's open. Popped out for Tiana Todd. Down low for Taya Sidbury. She's been bullying down low. 11 points, four boards. She really has. She had success in the first half on some mismatched scenarios, posting up guards, but she's just great around that block. So no matter who's guarding her, they got the hands for Russ gets Sidbury to leave her feet and gives it away again. Back-to-back -back times at this end of the floor that Russ has turned it over. Transition the other way. A three in transition rattles home for Boston College. A terrific start of this second half for the Eagles. It is. When Boston College can get steals, get out in transition, move the ball, find people spotting up, they are hitting those shots at a high clip. Pitt cut it to six going into the half. It's back out to a 15-point lead now for Boston College. Hand in the lane, turned over once again. Wagoner harmed on the way up. She'll head to the line for two. I like the hustle from Bella Perkins to get back. And, you know, I kind of wish Todd would have gave Dontavia a better pass. I think she would have had more momentum into that layup. But again, you see another steal by Boston College leading the offense. And Dontavia Wagner will have a chance on the free throw line to sink two. Right now, leading the way with Sidbury, 11 each. Lacey has 10. Balance scoring from their top three all the way around. And the officials. Are heading to the monitor. Haven't given us an indication as to why yet. But they are looking at something from that last foul. As soon as we know, we'll let you know. But all we know right now is Pitt all ready to begin this second half. Issues with the turnovers, and we'll find out right now as you will. We're looking back at that last foul before for Boston College. We'll come back and have it for you in just a moment. Eagles back up 15 tell us that they were looking to see whether or not they had to upgrade at the foul by Bella Perkins. In the transition on Dontavia Wagner, the verdict was common foul when all was said and done. Yeah, and I mean, I like the, the play on. It was, you know, no player was in danger there by that play, but sometimes I question the consistency of like when to call and not play on the ball as a, you know, intentional or whatever they call it and when not to, because clearly not a play on the ball there, but also not malicious. And Perkins didn't clobber her, but the fact is, it was intentional. So, yeah. gray area there. And the first one left short. Wednesday will be, the Nothing But Net crew will be at the Greensboro Coliseum for the Ally ACC Women's Tournament first round all day and night. Pre and post game shows, highlights, analysis, and interviews. Extensive coverage you can only find in one place, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Four and double figures for Boston College, well balanced among their top scorers. Not throughout necessarily, not getting much off the bench, but their starters are doing it all right now. 
Hutcherson, good look down low and lay it to King, has 10. Yeah, when they can get it down there, you could almost count on that. She's going to put that ball in the hoop. So one more board will give her the second double. Already has the first double with 10 points. It'll be her 18th double-double of the season. On the free throw line, no good. Either by Wagoner. And more second chance points for Boston College. Yeah, Aislinn Malcolm just did not box out or even look to make contact with Dontavia Wagner. But she comes down on the other end and... They got a charge. <laughs> Leah Tu King had foul trouble in the first half, but here in the second half, she is back to her normal self. Largest lead now of the game for Boston College, up 16. They were previously up by 15 twice. Pitt cut it down to six. Eagles lengthening it again, and even more so now. Jojo Lacey gets the roll. Yeah, and BC realizing that they can have some success around that ACC high post area. You saw Lacey miss the first one, and then she dribbles back into the same spot and sinks it. King, good. Both teams having success <laughs> against their zone defenses in that high post. Now Perkins, fronting Kayla Ivey. It's Jojo Lacey with it. Well, I believe Pitt in man-to-man, -man, actually, and the mismatch is there with Dontavia Wagner and Aislinn Malcolm. And now here, you know, few possessions in a row, they're finding success with those mismatches. Back-to-back -back possessions, barreling in on Malcolm. In between there, Malcolm called for the charge. A couple of trips back and forth for Malcolm, but a nice find for Hutcherson here. So head of the line for two. Hutcherson, one of the seniors honored today on senior day for Pittsburgh. She does have another year of eligibility for the Panthers. They wanted to make sure they honored all of the seniors today, but three of them still can come back if they'd like. Hutcherson, King, and Ayadel, all with eligibility remaining. And with the ACC tournament just a week and a half away, our last regular season Tuesday doubleheader is especially big. 7 Eastern, number 9 North Carolina hosts Notre Dame, and it's Georgia Tech against Wake Forest right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Andrea Daly comes back in. Tia Sidbury goes for a quick breather. Sidbury sits with 11 points. Daly is the leading scorer per game this season for Boston College. Only two points today. Given the scoring from elsewhere. Tend to shoot. Ivy finds Lacey. Jojo Lacey coming off a career high. Last game. Back out for Ivy from three. A foul underneath. Did they get Leah Two King for it? They did. That's four fouls now on Leah Two King. That was a great pass and find by Lacey to get down deep on that block and find Kayla Ivy who has hit a three today. She's off the mark with that one. Yeah, I think that's the right call, just to push in the back by King and she'll head to the bench again to sit for who knows how long. At least the remainder of this quarter, you have to imagine. <laughs> Already four fouls. Iadell replaced her. I think Iadell's gonna get called for this one. Perkins was also there underneath. And it will be Iadell. Yeah, Coach Verdi had talked about them needing to be physical and not get outworked. And rebounding is one of those areas where you have to outwork people and you have to make contact. And you see Boston College just has the advantage there. Wagner has the line leading the way. And all scores with 16 now make it 17. Just filling it up all across the stat sheet. She broke the Boston College single season steals record last game. Now up to 18 points here today. point game. Eagles pulling away a bit. Leah Two King back over on the bench. Perkins from three. That's what got them back into it in the first half. Malcolm hit one of those threes as well. Back to back shots. Perkins, Malcolm, no good. Long outlet. Wagoner. 20 on the day. 
She points immediately the other way at Kayla Ivy for the find. Ivy is really a great passer. That's like, you know, she passed that from half court. She saw it before the rest of us, but she looked it off, and it's a great finish by our team. Malcolm gets the roll. Tavia Wagner had 21 points when these teams met in January. That game went to overtime. She's already got 20 here today. Averaging 12.4 per game this season. Deanna Todd, Andrea Daly in the paint. Contact on the way up. And she'll head to the line for two. The no look find from Ivy bounds, finds Wagner down low for the finish. And Boston College right now up by 18. And in total control of this one. 4.20 to go here in this third quarter. Kayla Ivey, the word specifically that Coach Matt used for Boston College was floor general. And we've seen it over the last couple of possessions. The Eagles led by 20 at one point. They've been dominating here in the third quarter. More to come from Pittsburgh. Stories for players that have been crushing it as of late. Brought to you by Crush. 20 points on the day for Dontavia Wagner. Near a double, double double for Leah Two King as well. On the other side of the story right now, Wagner's still out there. Leah Two King is sitting with four fouls. Yeah, the fouls have kind of kept her out of a rhythm, not able to keep her on the floor for significant some amounts of time. But we've seen the impact that she has. We all know how important it is for Pitt to have her on the floor. But then Dontavia's just been fantastic. She's you know, getting it done on both sides of the floor. She doesn't quite have as many steals as we're used to seeing her have, but her activity is still very effective on the defensive end. For Jasmine Thomas, I'm Joe Malfa. Happy to have you with us on the ACC Network. Andrea Daly heads to the line, makes the first. It's a 19-point lead for Boston College. And Jasmine, we talked about it at length in the first half. Sure, this game has its X's and O's, has its next level, higher thinking strategy, but sometimes it's a simple game at its core. Turn the ball over, bad. Don't turn it over, good. And when Pitt has gone through their poor stretches in this game, it's been because of the turnovers. Yeah, exactly. And just offensively, Pitt has been, they use their defense to create offense. So, uh, sorry, Boston College uses their defense to create offense. So if Pitt's turning it over, they're feeding into exactly what Boston College wants to do. And that's why you see this deficit. And the reason they went on that run pit to cut it to just a six point game before the half, they stopped turning it over. Here in this third quarter, it's back out to the lead. It is now for Boston College, which is 20, because Pitt's been turning it over, and because the key scorers for Boston College have just been taking over. They have, and you know, they're just playing with confidence. They're having fun. You see them out there smiling together. And JoJo Lacey coming off of a big game, and their win against Carolina is still having a big impact for her team today. Career high, 23, last time out. And today, she's got 15. And a quarter and just over a half to try and get her career high back-to-back -back games. She has six steals to go along with that. Going <laughs> out the stat sheet all the way across. Perkins, needs something to ignite them. That won't do it. Hunterson. To Perkins on the deflection. Malcolm drives. Malcolm can't even get the lamp to go. It's been that kind of day for Pitt. But they'll have a chance at the line now because of Iadell. Yeah, and that's a great take by Malcolm, but Rapalucci Iadell doing what she does. She's very active on the offensive glass, so she'll get a chance at some free throws here. And just a rare moment where Boston College doesn't box out. 21 point lead. Boston College has 26 points off of turnovers. That's a lot. We weren't making it up when we said early in the game that turnovers would be key. They were the last time these teams met. The 21 point game and 26 points off turnovers. That right there is your game so far today. As Iadell cuts into the deficit by one. Boston College has to be feeling really good though right now. Still have to make sure they close this one out. And things got a little dicey late in the game last time against North Carolina. But they stop a 10 game losing skid with that win over the Tar Heels. And they followed it up with a really strong showing again so far today. All things you keep in mind as we get into tournament play this week. It's a team that is peaking all of a sudden again and back on the upswing. Yeah, it is. And you know, when you're just playing hard and staying locked in like they are given not having very many wins on the season. Look how hard they still play. Those are scary teams to play when it comes tournament time. 
Andrea Daly shuffling every which way and finally finds some space to put it up and in. The teams who also have the most success come more to the ones who get their lead scorers to show out as they have been today. Exactly, but that's the right thing for Boston College to do. You see her attacking Leah Two King right away. She's showing, you know, Daly showed her some fancy footwork, but King also not willing to foul. As those four fouls being very careful underneath. Verdi just had to put her back out there and take the risk and gamble at this point. With those four fouls, Leah Two King this early still in the game to put her back out there, but it's a 21-point game. Have to try and stop the bleeding somehow. You do, but I expect Boston College to still keep feeding the ball to whoever King is guarding. Kick by Perkins. Remember Pitt missing Marley Washington's over on the bench in a boot. <laughs> Turned her ankle early in this game, trying to draw a charge. They missed her. Washington has still been chopping at the bit over there on the sideline. She's in that first seat where the players are on the bench. Every time something good happens, she's popping up on that one leg. She's the first to greet everybody when they come over there, sitting next to Ella Perkins. Has to be eating at her not to be out there, the competitor she is. Sidbury, open look for Daly. Wide open shot for Daly. She's going to knock that down every time. And that's a great find by Sidbury. You know, the defense having to collapse to protect King a little bit, and she just finds Daly for the jumper. It's good offense. There's Timerson hasn't seen much action as of late and gives this one away. Ivy bounce pass, not handled by Todd. Yeah, it was a little bit behind her, but whew, she threaded that needle. She got it there. Just the vision. We saw it on the long outlet a little while ago on that bounce pass attempt there. King barreling in. Has to be careful on four fouls, swatted around. Sidbury brings it up. The Utah transfer has blossomed nicely this year for Boston College. Kicks it out, open three, no good for Tiana Todd. Yeah, Ivy is just spraying the ball. She has 11 assists, that was a chance to get a 12. Emerson directing things now for the Panthers. Ten to shoot. King pulls up. King doesn't get the roll. Look out in the backcourt there. Turn around, found the ball, Tiana Todd. <laughs> A minute to go in this third quarter. Boston College has opened it up to a 23-point lead. Remember, it was a six-point game at the half. And this is usually Pitt's best quarter. Game in, game out this whole season. They've been a really strong third quarter team. It's when they brought it back to being a close game against Miami last game. They've been notorious for being a terrific third quarter team. Not the case today. Boston College just has a lot of momentum. You know, they're just playing hard. They're faster to a lot of loose balls. They are, you know, playing confident. And you can play comfortable when you have this kind of lead right now. 31 to 14 in this quarter for Boston College. They had 36 points at the half. They have 31 in this quarter. Terrific. Scratch a play for the Eagles. Perkins trying to force it inside. Leah Two King was fouled by Sidbury. And Pitt's going to leave Leah to in to the very end of this quarter. I would use this time to take her out and just let her kind of get ready for the next one. You don't want anything crazy to happen right now. A risky run. Victoria Verdi. You look up at the scoreboard, you're down 23. Your best player has four fouls. Ayadel up strong. Clock turned off. Last possession here for Boston College. Thrown down low for Daly. Underneath, put up at the buzzer and in. Boston College will take a 23-point lead into the fourth quarter, dominating here on the road against the Panthers on Senior Day. And we are all on the edge of our seat. It's all set to begin again. Felt like just yesterday we were wrapping up last year and 
season was beginning and it just comes up on you quickly. All of a sudden it's March and we're into crunch time once more. Yeah, and it's been a fun season for women's basketball, especially in the ACC. It's been crazy. And now it's time for March Madness. Let it begin. And it begins here in the fourth quarter with Boston College up 23 points after a terrific third quarter. They won that third quarter 33 to 16 over Pitt. Turnover has started to rear their ugly head again for the Panthers. Leah to King picked up a fourth foul and had to go to the bench again. Meanwhile, Boston College was sinking basically everything at this end of the floor. Sid Berry. The foul goes against Denver Timerson. Give it to Ayadel, actually. It'll be her fourth. So Ayadel replaced Leah Two King when she went over to the bench. And now they both have four fouls. And another two on the ledger for Andrea Daly, who's up to 10. That gives them five in double figures, Boston College. Boston College has 38 points in the paint. They just, just have been pretty unstoppable around the rim. Yeah, two King through the traffic, gets it to go. Still one rebound shy of her 18th double-double. Second in the ACC in that regard. Sidberry puts it up. Not missing much at this end, Boston College. Yeah, Sidberry just having a great game against the, the smaller defenders of Pitt. To the corner from Malcolm. It's swatted on the way up. And it'll be Boston College ball. Andrea Daly just showing her length and ath athleticism. She's able to get that block on the three-pointer. Down low again for Wagoner, leading the way with 22 points. And make it 24 for number 24 here today. I love that decision by BC to keep going inside. They have this deficit already, and Pitt clearly looking out of sorts as they turn it over at half court. What has really come unglued for Pitt in this second half? Because they did so well to cut it to a six-point deficit at the end of that second quarter. I think just the, the, the third quarter kind of set them up just to be a little flat here in the fourth. They couldn't really get anything to go. You had Leah too in the foul trouble, and they're so used to playing through her that they just couldn't really get a rhythm. And then you got to be disruptive on the defensive end. You got to stop Boston College from getting these points in the paint so easily as that's a good stop there and give themselves more chances on the offensive end. Malcolm looks back for King. Leah to King, and that will be a fifth on Leah to King. And you know, Dontavia, Dontavia Wagner is a defender. That's a smart heads up play to take that charge. Sat on it, jumped in front, got position. I hate that for King. That's a hard call for refs to make when you have to, you know, foul out the best player on a team. But like we said, it's the risk you take. We knew she needed to be on the floor, but she was playing with those four fouls. And she did get a rebound on the last possession down the other end, so she did just get her double-double. <laughs> Good for her. If you track at home, 18 on the season. But that'll be it for her today on her senior day. Home down low for Daly. Just dominating inside all day long, Boston College. Yeah, absolutely. And she elevated to get that pass. I mean, it's just hard to their handful down low. And they are continuing to pour it in here against Pittsburgh. A 29-point lead. Daily tax on sweep with the first round of action in the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament on March 6th. And we know the seeds for these two teams, it seems like now. Boston College locked into 13, and unless Pitt comes back to win this one, down 29 with seven to go, they're locked into 15. So it could be Clemson, it could be Georgia Tech as their opponents. That'll all unfold over the rest of the action here today on the final day of the ACC regular season. You have to be happy if you're Boston College coming off the win against North Carolina to back it up with this. On the flip side, if you're Tori Verdi, not the note you wanted to go into the tournament on. Here's a look at some of the other games 
the rest of the day. As the Clemson and Georgia Tech could be opponents for BC and Pitt respectively. Georgia Tech, Miami coming up right after this. And Clemson, Florida State will follow that one as part of the triple header. Yeah, if you're Coach Mack with BC, it's definitely a positive sign that you have a big upset at home against Carolina. And then you turn around and have a chance to pick up your first ACC road win as Aislinn Malcolm knocks down the three from the corner. It's a, it's a nice way to end your regular season. I like what you brought up. First ACC road win is what they have coming up here, unless this is squandered somehow. They haven't beaten a conference opponent away from their building. Now they have. Obviously playing in a neutral site in a different building, but still, ACC opponent not in your building. That's what the tournament is going to be. This is big for the psyche of the Eagles. It is, it is. They should definitely be able to take some confidence into the tournament. Some other numbers that have stuck out from this one. We've got seven steals for JoJo Lacey to go with her 15 points. This one put up and in. From Perkins. We've also got 11 assists from Kayla Ivey. So some other numbers that have stuck out on this Boston College side, not just the scoring where they have five and double figures all around today. Terrific effort from Boston College. Yeah, and they're doing it by design. That was their game plan. They did it defensively, getting steals and getting their defense going, turning to offense. And then they've been sharing the ball. As you see, JoJo Lacey still hot from three, knocks down another one from the wing. 18 points today so far to back up her career high 23 last game against North Carolina. She was averaging 16 points over her last two starts, had a lengthy spell away from the starting lineup, Lacey. Now make it three games in a row where she started and has been terrific. And it looks like Boston College is set to empty the bench. Daly for Sidbury. And one last crack here for the starters. And that'll do it for the Eagles starting five. All will head to the bench en masse. And they leave with a 29-point lead on the road. A job well done. Daly wanted that uh, that rebound so she can get her double-double. She wanted it so bad, she got a little shove in the back to get it. And now we don't know if we'll see her go back into this game to get that double-double, but she had a terrific game. She's going to be on triple-double watch, potentially, if she could have stayed in the rest of the way. Perkins. It's a spark in the second quarter for this pit team. And that spark never materialized again in this second half. They've scored only 23 points in this second half pit. 46 in this second half for Boston College. One second to shoot. Hutcherson puts it up and connects. And Hutcherson has been a bright spot for Pitt today. She's come, she came in off the bench in the first half and made an impact doing some things, scoring the ball. And there you see her again. Coming in and getting some points. Leah Two King again on the bench now. Four Pitt had fouled out on the day on her senior day. Will leave potentially with a double double, 14 points and 10 boards. Leah Two King has left her mark certainly on this Pittsburgh program. Not yeah, the ending to it she wanted. Still can make some noise in the tournament. Moving on now from the bench. Has one more year of eligibility. Should she choose to use it? Could be here, could be elsewhere. Maybe made a really strong case for the most improved player of the year this year in the ACC. 18 double doubles, second in the conference. Jayla Jordan, pretty slow to get up. She's gonna get subbed out. She's been dealing with her low back for a little while. Raymond Boswell playing in her eighth game here today this season. Got some good run against Miami last time out. Four points and two boards in 14 minutes. Sophomore from Austin, Texas. Transfer over from Georgia Tech as well. Well, misses the second. The only starter still out there for Boston College now is Andrea Daly. Oh, 
Jalen Thompson now down for MJ. They're gonna have to play. I'd be curious to see if Daly stays in, if she gets that rebound. Oh, she actually just got credit for it. We're looking oh. at the stat sheet. They just updated it to 10. <laughs> so she has her devil devil now. You can rest easy, so maybe she might head back over to the bench once they realize it. The travel called against Kayla Lazama. So Daly got her devil devil. Identical stat line to Leah Tuking on the other side, 14 points and 10 boards. Huskerson, battle. Raven Boswell, Back out to Huskerson, 10 to shoot, looking for Rust, and she's fouled. Victoria Verity, a lot to think about heading into that first round matchup, whoever it could be, and the possibilities for Pitt after the dust settles would be either Georgia Tech or Virginia. What needs to be the talking point when they're looking things over between now and their opening round matchup? I mean, I'm sure it's been the conversation all season, but turnovers are really what gives them a hard time. They're playing so much defense, and they're not able to get a rhythm when they're just turning the ball over at such a high clip. So for sure, taking care of the ball would help them be successful in that first round matchup. And Jai gets on the board. Yeah, saw her briefly in the second quarter. Subbed in for one defensive possession. Well, goes up with it. Off of Njai. This is exactly what you want to see, though, if you're Boston College Week. First thing we mentioned coming on the broadcast today, play your best going into March. You never know who could make a run. And they have the confidence of just having beaten an 18 and 11 UNC team that would currently be the eight seed. The team they could see down the line in the tournament. They have that feather in their cap, and now they back it up with back-to-back -back wins to end the regular season. That's a team with the balance of scoring, shall we say, and a player like Wagner who can elevate and put up 24 on a day like this. It's a team you don't want to necessarily see once you get to the tournament. Yeah, Boston College has been great defensively all season. It was the offensive part, the consistency and confidence there that they were missing. And here you see, as of late, they've been great offensively. You see their highest uh, point totals on the season that they've been able to have. So things are looking good for them going into the tournament. And if you get into the analytics of it, Boston College had an offensive rating of 106 in their last game against North Carolina. When they've gotten, and this may be something that is stating the obvious, but when they've had an offensive rating over 100 this season, they're 8 and 1. So when they're clicking, they have been on the top of their game 8 and 1 when it's over 100, that offensive rating. Some minutes now for the end of the bench. Krasovec looking for Njai. They only ran six players out there in the rotation. Last game against North Carolina, just the flow of the game dictated that way. So the players who started and had the biggest impacts on this game, most of them played over 35 minutes last game. So it's nice to also have a chance to give them a breather at the end of this game instead of grinding it all the way to the end. Daly showing us a little bit of her point guard skills as well, directing traffic. Oh, but she fumbles it. Hutcherson comes up with the Turnover, the steal, I mean, and gets all the way to the rim. Would have liked to see an and one there, but how about that? Your post player showing the on-ball defense, getting down in his stance, comes away with the steal and gets a chance for some free throws. Hutcherson, again, one of the seniors that was honored today for the game. Nice hustle play here. Going coast to coast. Leaves it a little short, but... Chance on the line. Next on the first. Now one of the other seniors again. Leah Two King could be it for her at Pitt. Only time will tell. What will you remember most about her time at Pitt if this is indeed it for Leah Two King? I mean, just her improvement. You know, that's what you'd like to see as players get better as they spend time at it you know, in school and her improvement for sure, but also the fact that she's been able to get her numbers no matter which team she plays against. She can play at the top of the ACC against the best team and she still gets her number. She has proven that she truly is extremely talented and I'm happy that people are noticing all that she's capable of doing. And right there, the numbers that you're mentioning, 
10 points, basically, that she's jumped up from junior to senior year. Steady climb in every category, every season. She's going to average a double-double this regular season. When you have 18 of them over the course of the season, you're probably going to average a double-double. Just a quick math on that one. And that's what she'll have at the end of the 23-24 season. Krasovec puts one up. Board gathered by Battle. The damage has been done already today. 26 points. Boston College leads by an all-around dominant showing today for the Eagles. It really was. I feel like they, they had their game plan. They stuck to it the whole game, and they executed it. They weathered a, you know, a first-half comeback from Pitt where it was close within six, and then since then, they really have just dominated the game. Lauren Russ puts it up, and she'll have an and one opportunity. No, it's an offensive foul against Russ, so that'll bring us to the conclusion of this one. It's seven seconds to go. But Boston College comes away with their first road ACC win of the season. Yeah, and they can, like you said, take that momentum into the postseason ACC tournament, have a chance to play at a neutral site, and now having this road win, that is a good way to enter into the tournament. And they end the season on a two-game winning streak after what